I'm going to show you how to use Bokashi to ferment your food scraps. So whether you have purchased a bin like the SCD probiotics bin or made your own bin like I just did out of one or two five gallon pails, the process is the same. So we can put fruits and vegetables, meat and dairy, any food scraps can go into this bin and here's how to do it. So you want to chop up your, all of that stuff into smaller pieces. I don't know if you can tell, but this is just chopped up a, more finely than it would be if I were not planning to ferment them. The reason is we, this is a process we want to to do without air or with as little air as possible. So chopping things up small just allows us to, when we push them down, it'll, it'll have less air in there. The second thing is rather than opening up our Bokashi bin 10 or 15 times a day, every time we have a little, say, piece of fruit or tea bag or any sort of organic thing that comes out of the kitchen to throw in there. What a lot of people like to do is just keep their scraps in a little pail like this and just once a day throw that into the Bokashi bin. That means we're only opening the lid once per day and so there's less air exchange happening there. I'm not sure how much of a difference this makes to the Bokashi, but I do it. I like the idea of keeping this as fermented of a process as possible. Just imagine if you were trying to make sauerkraut and you opening the jar 10 times a day, it's better to open the jar only once a day. Well, with sauerkraut, you wouldn't be opening the jar, but I digress. Okay, so whenever we do throw the scraps into the bin, we put some bokashi in too. So here is my new bin, it's totally empty. You can actually, especially if you don't have any holes in your bin, you would probably put like a two inch layer of bokashi on the bottom to soak up the water that comes out of the food scraps. But I have, oh, you maybe can't see it, but I drilled some holes in the bottom of this pail and it's sitting inside of a second pail. And so I can just do that. Yeah. So whenever I put food scraps in, I'm also putting in either some Bokashi I have purchased or usually some Bokashi I have made myself and dried. And I don't measure it. I try to put in maybe 25% as much Bokashi as food scraps. So if it looks like I've put in, in this case, three cups of food scraps, I'm putting a little less than one cup of Bokashi. And I'm sorry, I can't really show you properly because of gravity, you know? But oh, I'm doing this, I'm mixing it in nicely. And I'm shaking it around. I want the Bokashi to touch the food scraps as much as possible. That's another reason why I like to chop the food scraps up into small pieces because more of them will be exposed to the Bokashi and to the microorganisms that are in the Bokashi. Once this bin starts to get a little more full, I use, I just use my hand, but some people use a potato masher or anything to always push everything down to get the air out of there. So every time we add stuff to the pail, we're just pushing it down and then putting the lid back on tight and every day or two draining any liquid that comes out because if we drain that liquid right away, it should be a nice microbial inoculant to feed to your plants, water your plants with, if you don't have a use for it, like if it's winter and you don't have indoor plants, you can just pour it down the drain. It might have some benefit down the drain too. But if you were to let it sit for like a week or two, it starts to go bad. And that's why you want to drain it every day or two. In order to make sure this liquid is a nice microbial inoculant, you want to, again, always be pushing the air out of the bucket. Make sure you're adding enough Bokashi in there to inoculate it well chopping up your food scraps into some smaller pieces. That's all going to make sure that we get a nice liquid coming out of there. When the bin is full, you want to push it down, put a nice layer of Bokashi on top, 
Sometimes I go so far as to like put a, a plastic garbage bag on top or something. Same thing I do when I'm making my bokashi. I'm just trying to make sure that the air stays out. And then I'm putting the lid on tightly and letting it ferment for at least two weeks. Then that's why I always want to have two bokashi bins because while it's fermenting, I can start my other bin and start adding food scraps to it. And then once it has fermented for two weeks, we need to do something with it. And generally that's going to be burying it into the garden or into a compost pile or into a worm bin. That is coming up next if you're watching this in my course. If you're watching this on YouTube or on my website, you may be interested to know how to make your own bakashi. And if you haven't seen that video, I will put a video link for you right in this vicinity. Oh, that's in the way. Ah, that's coming up next.